Hello to all on Women Dialogues, and I'm your host Shashi with you all to create more voice for women and by women. And today's our guest is Lydia. She is from Netherlands, and she is the project manager and responsible for knowledge management at SBM Offshore, sustainability ambassador uh, for SBM Amsterdam. So welcome, Lydia, on this platform. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here with you. Thank you, Lydia, for accepting our request and being on this platform to share your life journey, your success, your uh, ups and your dull and uh, moments, and to be yourself what way you are uh, being in your life, in your career, in your uh, profession. So uh, let's start hearing about your life story your success journey to learn to motivate and to inspire yes thank you thank you for uh, for giving me the forum um to to share my experiences so uh basically i'm based in uh, in the netherlands in amsterdam actually i'm originally from spain as you can hear from uh, from my accent for a from a very sunny city where uh, the oranges the best oranges uh, come from uh, valencia Mm -hmm. And um, if I have to share, well, my uh, my uh, my career and life journey, because I think it, it has been very connected in my case, my life with uh, with my professional uh, career. So I studied uh, law, uh, and I specialize in international business law. Um, but now I am in a project management uh, role because I have not always been the typical lawyer. I always like to uh, to explore different things. And uh, what I did when I finished my studies in um, in Spain is that I moved to Bulgaria, to Sofia, uh, which is the capital. And I used to work for an online broker there. Um, and uh, it was a very insightful thing to do because I moved to a very different country than Spain. So that uh, taught me a lot of things about myself and about the world that I didn't know. And then I have always uh, been very keen on having new experiences in different countries. So then I did my uh, second master's in uh, Amsterdam after I worked for a bit in, um, in Bulgaria. And um, I also, again, discovered many new things about myself, a different culture. And I was very lucky to, to have an internship in my current um, uh, employer, SBM Offshore, in compliance. So I did uh, risk and compliance for four years. And then I've had the opportunity to take a, a project manager role uh, focused on how to use knowledge as an asset within the organization. And that's very connected to my heart because I think that um, uh, knowledge should be shared and uh, particularly when it comes to experiences and things that have worked for you and things like that. And that's also why, together with my very best friend, a very fantastic woman, Maria Planes, uh, that I admire, you know, a lot. And uh, she's the co-founder with me of uh, How I Met My Mentor which is a platform where we try to, you know, like you, to empower women, to connect women with different initiatives and things that are going on. And we have a podcast show uh, called How I Met My Mentor, uh, which is available in uh, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and uh, Spotify. And we have interview with wonderful women that share their experiences and um, their career journey. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's beautiful. And the way you explain about your career journey, the way you uh, you know, shared your inquisitiveness to learn always, to find your more passion in different things. Mm. Uh, that sounds very interesting. And especially when you have the zeal to learn, to explore different countries, different culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it, uh, it sounds very interesting. And I believe it, it has been very interesting for you as well. Uh, so, uh, Lydia, when we are talking all about your experiences and all, uh, it mm -hmm. seems like you you was always keen to learn, to explore. Uh, how about when we are uh, maybe trying to connect these dots in your childhood? Uh, was What kind of were your, your childhood was? Was it similar like uh, kind of personality yeah. or how did you overcome? <laughs> or how you learned I, I yeah, I, I think it's a fantastic question. You know, um, I've been always a very happy kid. 
um, I've always had this eagerness to explore. And I was very lucky because my parents, they always allowed me to explore all the activities. So I did basketball, ballet, piano, um, singing. Uh, I did like so many different things. I just wanted to, to, to explore, you know, everything was very interesting to me. And I think that has accompanied me in, in, my, um, in my adulthood or is accompanying me in my adult, adulthood because I'm always eager uh, to explore and to learn because mm -hmm. I think that learn makes you be very humble, you know? So yeah. when, or also moving, you know, moving to another country or, or learning about another culture, it makes you be very humble and it also develops a great awareness you know, and consciousness um, that I think it's very important to, first of all, connect with people who is not from your surroundings, eh? because probably if I speak with a Spanish lady of around my age, with, um, with my background, we understand each other very well. But how I'm going to do with somebody located, you know, very far away with a many different, you know, value uh, settings. So that's why I think learning is always very important but also have the motivation and the inspiration to learn. And that yeah. not, not always comes from within you, but also from your surroundings. And if you don't find it, then you need to keep, <laughs> to keep looking for it because it's, it's, it's very important in my view. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, when we are talking about uh, gaining those different skills and different experiences, uh, I, I, I believe it's, it's uh, very common or it's very usual. We have to overcome lots of challenges and uh, lot, lots of time those stressful situation and all. How about in your uh, life? Did you find such kind of moments? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have no idea how many times in my life people have told me that I cannot do something, which I, I am very happy that I have been so rebel <laughs> on that regard. You know, um, it, th th there were a couple of, of, of moments in my life where uh, I, of, of course, everybody has challenge and our challenges might vary in the way that we see the world and in our personality. So my challenge might be very different from the challenges that you have experienced because we are different people. Mm -hmm. However, women, we can connect in some of the ways that we experience challenges because we are yeah. perfectionists, people pleasers, it's difficult to say no and so on. But that's another chapter. So mm -hmm. in my case, um, you know, I have played piano for 10 years and now I play, but very like uh, as a hobby. So when I started, I can tell you that I was the worst by far. <laughs> I was really the worst by far and I was uh, struggling, you know, um, but yet I was very, very determined on that. I wanted to play piano. So, I, you know, I can be bad or I cannot do it very well, but I'm going to make it happen. So mm -hmm. I remember when, uh, you know, when I started high school together with a professional, um, uh, you know, with professional piano school. And I remember that uh, in one of the first lessons at high school that I had, some teacher, I, I think it was a male teacher, by the way, he said, uh, you know, piano with high school in the level that you are playing. Yeah, that's 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 very difficult. That's um, that's not going to happen. And I looked and I thought, um, and I thought, yeah, but uh, who are you to choose if it's going to happen or not? You know, no. why would we start with the no from the beginning? So actually, eventually I was one of the few, you know, I was one of the worst students, but at the end I grew and I was one of the few who finished uh, piano school together with uh, with very good marks in in high wow. school, you know? Wow. Yeah. So, so so no, it's uh, so no, it's not an answer for me sometimes. Um, and um, you know, also when I used to work for uh, for another company for this broker, I think uh, uh, my level of English was nothing alike the level of English that you're hearing today. Um, mm -hmm. But yet I was so eager to learn, and I knew that I could speak well and express myself, not only speaking but also writing and so on. Um, and I remember a couple of colleagues, they made fun of me because of my Spanish accent and, you know, because I couldn't use the correct English term for some things. And, and you know, and they were like, um, uh, you will never make it to compliance or to something very, uh, you know, to a very like high level position because your English is so bad. <laughs> and I looked at them and I also thought, mm, 
who are you to tell me no? And again, you know, I was a bit rebel. So now uh, I even have my own show where I talk in English, you know? So yeah. no, yeah, no is something that you have to choose. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the challenges. Yeah, and I, I think the way you explained, you shared uh, how you took those challenges in your life and you perform out of those no to your best and you became one of the best uh, among all of those who were saying uh, who were challenging you or who were saying no to you that's really inspiring and motivating uh, i really like the way Thanks. you shared uh, your challenges and your journey so uh, lydia we we are definitely finding a lot of motivation by hearing your story and when we talk about it, it seems like you are a really strong woman who is dedicated uh, to make it uh, best from her side, to inspire, and same time, yeah. uh, in her life best thing. So, but when we talk all about it, we know many times we, we have those moments, we really need some mm -hmm. support. And when we talk about those support or maybe those circles, where you keep uh, yourself like yes this is maybe your my your my mother or my my father or my my siblings or my husband or my friend uh, maybe someone somewhere in your life uh, how you feel connect with them or how you find those are important connections in your life yes i think it's a very wonderful uh, well reflection and then uh, question um so there are several uh, layers, in my opinion, mm -hmm. here. So um, I think you really need to support yourself from the people that you really trust. In my yeah. case, is my, uh, my 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 direct family, and also that includes uh, uh, my brother, because I know that I can be really myself with them. So maybe for other people, it's not necessary the family, but it's also some friends. So yeah. you know, I have a. A couple of persons with whom I don't have to explain myself a lot, but they, yet they are going to understand me. And those are really, you know, great, great supporters uh, that I need in my life and that I, uh, and that I use <laughs> every time that I need uh, support and I need to, to check my ideas because sometimes I think I always like to test my ideas and my decisions. You know, um, I think it's important to be the owner of your decisions. So you have to be the one making the decisions for yourself. But it's right. fine to let other people, uh, you know, help you in that decision process. But should be people that you really trust uh, and people that know you well. Having said that, life is very interesting. And life puts you people on your journey that can teach you. And I am always open to that. And sometimes we believe that uh, our teachers are going to be only like mentors or people like us. I do believe a lot on mentorship, you know, and that's why we have a show called How I Meant I met my mentor, but I always keep open for the learnings that we may find along the way, you know, and for everybody is different. But, um, you know, I think sometimes the universe sends you some people along the way that you can learn from. And not only those ones that like you a lot, because uh, the people that likes us a lot, that think alike, oh, that's very easy. We test our ideas, we feel comfortable. But also the people who, you know, who are a little stone in your path or people who challenge you a lot or people who think very different as you, they can still teach you a lot about yourself and about, mm -hmm. you know, the way forward. And me particularly, sometimes I've learned the most with big failures and mm -hmm. big deceptions of people, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so people that have, yeah, disappointed me, they also taught me things. Mm -hmm. So um, open mind about the, the, the learnings and um, yeah, that will be my, uh, I, my answer. I, yeah, that's, that's true. And I think, uh, especially when we are on this platform and audience and viewers are listening and, uh, it's really uh, inspiring again, and it's really giving a lot of learning and lessons how one can keep uh, finding uh, in those low and dull moments 
finding their own voice and their own motivation uh, what they really mm. look for what they are really uh, want to do and especially when we are talking about as a this platform women dialogue and if our audience as a women they are listening they find themselves to get uh, you know defined by their family member or they they find themselves low so sharing your story is really powerful and it's Thanks. really meaningful for them because uh, they can understand how one has to find their own purpose or own meaning in their life so that's super powerful once again thank you yeah. thank you so much for sharing it coming of course. back to your work and the work which you do mm-hmm. uh tell us about your work a bit of more how and what kind of things you deal with how one can uh, you know learn something kind of similar work which you do if they are interested of course so so i am a switcher <laughs> as you call it because i started in uh, risk and compliance um and then i moved recently to the project uh, management uh, sphere so now i'm a project manager for uh, for knowledge uh, management um so if i have to share things about compliance um it's a lot about behavior so compliance is of course about doing the right thing but we also worked a lot on behavior on training to employees you know and and making sure that we would communicate what is the expected behavior from our employees and risk and compliance is a very very vast discipline but one of the things that i have enjoyed uh the most was the behavioral and cultural aspect related to the company and related to the people and uh related to that i worked uh a lot on a speak up culture um and and the importance of a speak up culture which i believe is very connected to women and to our assertiveness you know so i i invite anybody in the audience who who wants to explore more about uh speak up uh materials tips about helping employees to to speak up i will be uh, uh yeah very happy to to share more information i think what's important for a speak up is to create a, a, a safety uh, in order to speak uh not only in an organizational level but also you know in a in a personal level psychological safety safety you know because we can say oh we would like people to speak up but how do you act when somebody speaks up do you like reward that behavior do you yeah. cut clear that behavior oh i want you guys to speak up but you should not challenge me you know mm-hmm. so those are the 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 items that we have uh, that we have to consider mm-hmm. um and then as a switch to what i am as opposed to, to what i'm doing nowadays like i said i took along since the 1st of of march this year i took along a project whereby i have to establish a knowledge management framework in my company and mm-hmm. yeah it's really to make sure that we use knowledge as an asset and uh, especially nowadays you want to make sure that you have a uh, uh, clear where is your knowledge in terms of people in terms of processes in terms of technology so what i am doing now is like a little kid exploring what do we have uh and covering the gaps uh finding some strategy and and things like that yeah that's wonderful and i i would like to make you remind that you are doing other wonderful job as well how do i find my mentors so tell us about bit yeah. more that's other your project which you are doing how do i find my mentor yes so it's actually how i i met my mentor so very yeah, similar i, yeah, yeah. I told him this no no worries it's very uh, it's very confusing sometimes so uh, well so uh, how i met my mentor um so the thing is that uh, you never know what's going to happen with your ideas and that you should yeah. execute your ideas that's yeah. what i really encourage people to do all of us are different and have a special idea and a special set of skills and strengths that we can use and we got a voice you know we got a voice that is unique uh we have one life and we have to share what do we think right. because you know or our perspectives are very interesting or maybe you know it's only nice that you share with others i think you know that's that's very important 
So one day I was just having some drinks with uh, well, two of the most powerful women that I know that happen to be my best friends, Carlota and Maria. Uh, and I said, guys, I've been thinking a lot. And I believe that we have some lack of inspiration, you know, like women who are starting their careers in the middle of their career, obviously not women in leadership, those maybe have already their inspiration, but we have sometimes a lack of inspiration. And I find very important that in a workplace, we are inspired you know, mm. and I said to them, I would love to create a platform where we share information about how to get inspired. And I had a mentor who inspired me the most. So, right. and maybe we can talk about mentorship in this platform and so on. So my friend Maria, who is actually a, a wonderful industrial designer, she said, okay, let's do this together. So we decided to, to start with How I Met My Mentor. And through our How I Met My Mentor podcast, we invite wonderful women that share with us tips and tricks on their career, challenges, and 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 they basically mentor us during this uh, this episode that normally lasts uh, thirty minutes or so. Um, and I, I'm like you again in the in what I call the the inspiration business, uh, the business of inspiration, or maybe, um, because I think that if you inspire at least one person you have already done something wonderful you know yeah. and we also did it for ourselves you know we said hey what about having these amazing women talking to us and yeah. you know answering our questions how yeah. amazing is that you yeah. know so um yeah, that's uh, how I met my mentor. Some of the that's, things that I do. That's wonderful. And that's, that's like very exciting project which you are doing. And mm -hmm. would you like to share some uh, maybe uh, impactful stories where you find, like as you mentioned, maybe even a one person and you was able to get some maybe feedback or some message, something where you yeah. find, yeah, I made it. Yeah. So basically, obviously, my friends, uh, my uh, my uh, most of my female friends who are working in, in corporations, I uh, I oblige them actually to uh, to listen to the podcast. They had no choice but uh, but get inspired for uh, for from this podcast, um, and 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 they found inspiration. They said, and what I liked the most is to hear them saying this resonates with me oh my god i thought i was the only one thinking this way or i thought this i thought that you know so yeah. it made me extremely happy that it resonated with them yeah. and then of course our followers they send us mm -hmm. uh, messages via instagram via linkedin and they are saying thank you so much for doing this Keep the good job, girls. You inspired me, and 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 I think that's priceless. I think there is no money in the world who would pay that feeling of when Maria or, <clears throat> excuse me, myself, have a look into those messages and hear and read uh, rather. Yeah. Good work, girls. Keep it doing. Thanks for the yeah. inspiration, and that's um yeah, that's really the best. That's um yes. that's yeah, wonderful. I, yeah, I believe. Right. I can feel that I, I can, uh, you know, find that kind of feeling and joy and happiness when can feel when you are really doing, uh, you know, with a good purpose where you are finding the people are really getting those vibes, those positive vibes, which you are trying to uh, spread out, not only around you, but in globally. That's beautiful. Job. Exactly. Yeah, that's funny. exactly like you are huh? like this is part of what you are doing. And I think there is a movement uh, or maybe I just realized now that there is a movement of of creating more sisterhood. Huh? So many initiatives, there is, you know, a lot of appetite for people talking to each other, for women sharing their knowledge, their experiences. Huh? So um, I think that's wonderful. And if it fosters for a sisterhood and for more motivation, and to put ourselves in our best, let's go for it, you know? Yeah, that's wonderful and that's beautiful. So Lydia, we, we hear you, we hear about your work, we hear about your, uh, all the projects which you are doing and inspiring and motivating all of uh, pe people, not only around you, but even globally. What is the most strong output or points about your feminine leadership? 
Um, what is, is a very wonderful question. So I think I am uh, very strong at communication. I can be better for sure because I could be more assertive. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one of um, the most valuable things that I have are is my energy and that connected to my communication. And I think that somehow makes people feel confident or, or, or to trust to, to speak with me. And what I try to practice, um, I'm not sure if it's my stronger point yet, but for me is the one that I would like to, to focus on the most is in being authentic. Mm -hmm. Because I think that your leadership when you are an authentic is effortless. Mm -hmm. And I try to be very empathic, which I also think is important, a good communicator, be able to inspire others with my vision. But the most important quality, I think, is just to be authentic, just to be yourself. Uh, and just make sure that your, your leadership is in tune with who you are. You know, uh, and ask yourself questions, really. You know, I think it's important to to take a minute to think, to be self-aware, um, to understand where do you want to go and how do you want the others to perceive you, right? Because I, a leader is nothing without followers. I mean, like, <laughs> you can't go very far, I guess. Um, so... How do I want the others to perceive me and how can I be in tune with myself? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think you can do that by being very authentic. Yeah. 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 That's, that's super important. Being authentic, being yourself, being uh, align your values yourself with your way, the way you think and the way you want to spread out. And uh, so when we are talking all about it, be, uh, what's your leadership qualities, how you deal all those kind of things, what are your future plans for your work? Yes, good question. So um, the way that I see it is that um, uh, I, I like to get out of my comfort zone. Uh, so that's why I switched recently to a new challenge. I always, and I think makes sense, it always, it's always important for me to, to keep learning. And I think, you know, you can do that when you really get out of your comfort zone. And uh, for me, it was uh, switching career. Um, my plans um, are to, to be happy. <laughs> and that might sound like what? But yeah, really to be happy. And how can I be happy is by using uh, my skills in the best and by developing knowledge. So I want to stay true to myself uh, and take on board those assignments that make me happy, that make me shine uh, and that, uh, you know, make me use my strengths at my best. And those are my future plans. So I love to have a bigger team. I love to have a higher position in an organization. But first, I just want to be happy and think that my job, you know, is used for something bigger than me and that contributes to a better society, not only from my role that I have currently in SBM, but also, you know, in the inspiration business, contributing to, to, to a better place to, to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, like a very um, optimistic, very positive and very uh, well planned you have uh, done for your future and wish you good luck for that. So when thanks. we are talking all about it, uh, first of all, thanks a lot for sharing all your views, all your, uh, you know, motivation, your life journey with, with me, with our audience and viewers. But before finishing, I would like to ask, why do you think the platform like this Women Dialogue is needed? No. You know, I think any forum that supports women to talk to each other and to share their experiences is needed. And I think we need to raise visibility. And I think that we need to have very diverse and inclusive uh, group of women talking. Why? Because there are many women who make it to the top, right? So who break the glass ceiling. 
but we need those and 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 uh, maria uh, read a book related to that i think the one percent feminine or something like that i will uh, share the title with you but we were discussing this that you know if somebody breaks the glass ceiling hey remember to put some stairs for the rest so by sharing by you know inviting women by inspiring other women with these dialogues we are already doing that and we are creating that sisterhood that might be need to advance more uh, there are so many battles there are so many battles that we yet have to fight i think the last united nations report said that you know we are going to take 100 years in order to be paid the same you know, as man, there is so much to do. There are so many unconscious biases, you know, mm -hmm. that in Western, Eastern, whichever culture that they are there. There are so many women who are not yet the owners of their body, you know. Yeah, so nice. we need to keep doing pressure and to, you know, for those who break up the glass ceiling, remember to put the stairs. And for those, you know, who are already in the stairs, remember to give the hand so we can make sure that we uplift each other yeah yeah that's beautiful and thank you thank you for having such faith and such wonderful uh, feeling for such kind of di dialogue such kind of platforms where we are creating uh, those all sisterhood those all empowering uh, women or globally to each one of us and that's really important and last not least what one message would you like to give to our audience or, or viewers who are listening and watching us? Yeah, uh, which message? So I think um, get out of your comfort zone. Uh, you are good enough. You are more than good enough. Um, take some risks. Dare to fail because it's good. It's good learning. And uh, just be uh, at your best and, uh, and love yourself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> thank that's, you that's thank you that's beautiful <laughs> and i think that yeah yeah especially in during current uh, you know pandemic and current scenario uh, we all need that that uh, don't need to get, feel like you are failure people are mm -hmm. having stress of losing jobs and all but might be that uh, failure or maybe losing jobs is giving new direction or new a time or a skill for them to develop further yeah. so that's really wonderful that uh, keep yourself out of your comfort level and comfort zone and ex keep exploring mm -hmm. yourself yes. thank you Lydia thank you so much you are such a powerful and motivated person who is motivating and inspiring others it's beautiful to have time with you to share this dialogue with you thank you so much Likewise, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity and I wish you and all the best. Thank you. And thanks to all viewers. If you would like to hear more women voices and part of women dialogues, please connect with us. Please share, subscribe and like and thank you. See you in the next episode. And don't, check, uh, don't forget to check the Lydia's work, which she's doing with very passionately. Her details are available in the description as well. See you in the next episode. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.